Let us join together in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, draw near to us once more as we seek to be your people wherever we might be. Unite us by your Spirit. And then by the indwelling of your grace, open our hearts and minds to the wisdom of the ages found in your word. Be with us now and always in Christ's name, for you are our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Earlier we heard two scripture lessons from the Old and New Testaments. The psalm talks about God as the creator, the one who shaped and formed all things in glory and in truth. And then Paul goes to the community in ancient Greece and he says, you have talked about unknown gods, yet I proclaim to you the one true God, the maker of all that is. So that language about creation goes all through the Bible. And as we begin a new year, it's appropriate to hear once more the founding verses that describe God's work as the creator of all that is. So I'm going to read Genesis chapter 1, the first five verses. I'm not going to read the verses as they're found in the New Revised Standard Version we commonly use, but instead a Hebrew translation by scholar Everett Fox. Listen then to this poetic and beautiful reminder how God is our creator. At the beginning of God's creating of the heavens and the earth, when the earth was wild and waste, Darkness was over the face of the ocean, and rushing Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. There was setting, and there was dawning one day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So friends, as I mentioned, here we are early in the new year. We can finally put the last year behind us. No more 2020. We find ourselves at a new starting point, year 2021. And so it's appropriate to remember the very first starting point, Year zero, that time when God created the heavens and the earth, when God called forth order out of chaos. That had been my intent earlier this week. And then Wednesday happened to us all, chaos emerging out of order. In fact, chaos called forth by the very one person constitutionally commissioned to protect order. What a way to begin a new year. But actually, this is where our Jewish colleagues are very wise. In the Jewish tradition, each day begins not one minute after sunrise, but rather one minute after sunset. The sequence is always evening darkness moving through daylight for one day. Too often we think that the sun sets as a way to mark the end of an old day of mispotential. But in the Jewish tradition, the sunset marks the beginning of a new day of untapped potential. And therein lies the wisdom of Genesis. There was evening setting, and there was morning dawning the first day. There's a lot that we can learn from the opening words of Genesis because the words speak to us personally as we face whatever is before us in this new year, and it speaks to us as a nation as we confront all that's been revealed about us in the last week. This message from Genesis is a message of hope and of light, and in it God says to us, it is good. So let's go back to the beginning. Every act of creation requires a place to create. The potter needs a wheel 
and a surface upon which to mold the clay. A writer needs a pen and paper. A composer needs a pencil and staff paper. A painter needs brushes and paint and a a stretched canvas upon which art can be made. So the question is, what was created on the first day of creation? Well, the Genesis writers talk about light and darkness. But remember that the sun, moon, and stars weren't actually created until the fourth day. I believe, in effect, what God created on that first day was simply a space for creation. The universe was formless and void, wild and waste. Poetically, we call it a place of dark waters and of chaos. And then God pushed back the chaos and established a place for new life for us. And it wasn't done by chance or by whimsy. It was done because it was destined to be good. Now, on that first day, did the darkness disappear? Was chaos destroyed? No. It was simply pushed back, but it remained close at hand, there on the margins of the blank canvas of creation. Chaos will always feel close to us. The chaos of fear and anxiety, the chaos of self-doubt and worry, of mob rule and violence and destruction. But remember our Jewish roots. When the sun sets, the first thing we're supposed to do is then light a candle. And the candle pushes back the encroaching darkness and says, you shall not win because a new day of light is beginning and God is with us. Even now, if you're feeling discouraged or afraid on any of these days, light a candle at dusk. Say a short prayer. Say the words, Let there be light on this new day and know that God is good all the time and all the time God is good and mean it. Every day is a blank canvas, something that's gifted to us to fill. And the start of a new year is the perfect time to consider the canvas before us, to set some goals and priorities for this year ahead. Over 500 years ago, St. Ignatius of Loyola wrote a, a small book called Spiritual Exercises. And in the book, he asks us to do something called a daily examine. The examine is a prayerful review of the day just past, looking for signs of God's presence and grace. It's a time to take inventory, to list up our assets and liabilities, and ask ourselves, what can I do to support and nurture that which is good. Jesus Christ himself always took inventory. Remember the time when he was preaching to the large crowd and he noticed that they were starting to grow hungry. He turned then to his disciples and the first thing he asked them was, well, how many loaves do we have? Go and see. The disciples went out and came back and listed their inventory of five loaves and a few fish. Now to the disciples on that day, that was a pittance to set before a crowd of 5,000 people. But for Jesus, it was enough for a miracle. But it only became enough once the disciples took time to stop and to count and to imagine actually feeding the crowd, to actually act by God's grace to care for others. So the first step in filling the blank canvas of creation is to take inventory and then to imagine doing something good with what you have. Then the second step follows, and that requires that we make sure that you're working with a level playing field. Every artist's canvas is stretched taut over its frame so that the paint can be applied evenly to the surface. In the same way, the places in life where we seek to create things of beauty need to be level and fair to all concerned. Now, I'll acknowledge this is hard because 
our fleshly inclination is always to look after our own interests first, to prioritize personal good over the common good. We are, yes, creatures of sin. And sin is real, but sin is less about breaking rules as it is about believing we're exceptions to the rules. Sin says, well, stealing from work is bad, but there's something I need and no one will notice if I take this from petty cash. Addictions are damaging and dangerous, but I can handle abusing prescription drugs or drinking during the day or telling lies to my family in order to get what I want. Sins of exception are actually at the heart of white privilege and so many of the sins of racism that still plague our nation. Many people have pointed out the racist overtones to this week's riot in Washington, D.C. There were National Guard and armed police forces readily available when people took to the streets to protest George Floyd's death. But their absence was blatantly obvious on Wednesday as privileged white Trump supporters desecrated the Capitol building, as they took their shameless selfies on the Senate floor, as they provoked senseless losses of life that have stained our national honor. Those mobs evoke the memories of the people that used to gather around the lynching trees, the slave masters who would rape the women they owned. It reminds us of the American sin of white feet pressing down on the necks of Native Americans, Chinese, Mexican, and African bodies in this land for over 400 years. We cannot create by desecrating. We need a level playing field because until all are free, then none are free. And that's why John the Baptist quoted the prophet Isaiah and talked about a time how the mountains need to be brought low and the valleys need to be lifted up. That's precisely why in Jesus' ministry he would walk through the crowds, but then he would call from the margin the deaf man by the side of the road. He would ask forward the lepers shouting by the city gates. He elevated the woman with the flow of blood who was hiding in the shadows of the crowd precisely to lift them up from their valleys of exclusion, to recognize their full humanity, to call them beloved children of God. The canvas of creation must be a fair playing field, and all of us play a part in making that so. Because remember, God didn't eliminate chaos at creation. God created a place of beauty and order that could emerge when the boundaries push back the power of chaos. And our lives find their spiritual purpose when we do precisely that. When we push back the chaos ever threatening from the margins. When we create intentionally what is just and loving and good. On Netflix right now, there's a powerful adaptation of August Wilson's play, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. It stars uh, Viola Davis and Chadwick Bosman. And Bosman plays the young black man trumpeter Levy, a man hoping for fame in a white world that constantly denies him power and dignity. In this tragic play, Levy lashes out against a colleague who accidentally scuffs his shoes, and he allows the chaos and pain and injustice to wash over him as he commits a senseless act of violence. We all know that chaos is ever near, and that's why we're called to be vigilant, to see every new day as a new beginning, to pray for grace and strength for the work before us. And that's why we speak up, that's why we act up, and that's why we persist, lighting candles that the darkness cannot overcome. And as we do so with God, we too affirm, yes, it is good. Order out of chaos. Resurrection hope. Earlier this week, as I prepared for this sermon, I tried to imagine things that captured this idea of rebirth 
and ordering out of brokenness. I thought about Mount St. Helens, the volcano that erupted 40 years ago now and destroyed the landscape. But if you revisit that area, you will see now green fields and wildlife and blooming forest trees. Ironically, I also thought about the time when we in America rebuilt our capital after it was destroyed and burnt by the British in 1814. Back then, the British army was cast out and we chose to rebuild right in the same spot. May we have the courage to cast out the sinful extremism that led to the recent ransacking of those hallowed halls. And may we work to rebuild our nation's honor. And in the end, the best words to describe this concept and idea of a new beginning, a new year, a new day of creation entrusted to us is the phrase I just mentioned, resurrection hope. The word resurrection comes from the old Latin word resurgere, which means to rise again. In fact, Old English used to translate it with the phrase again rising. In German, the word is auferstehung. In Dutch, it is opstanding. Both of them mean simply to stand up again. Popular Christianity will sing and tell Jesus how much we love him, but remain silent on idolatry and injustice and mob violence. Biblical Christianity is much more muscular. It will push back against chaos, brokenness, and despair. It will make a space as it takes inventory, as it makes a level playing field, and allows a canvas of beauty to then work for justice and lovingly care for all. Now, you may not feel up to that challenge, It's been a hard season for all of us. And you may feel like there's just nothing you can do as one person. But remember, when darkness falls and the sun sets, all it takes for us is to light one candle, to say a prayer trusting in the potential of the new day that is before us, and to seek God's guidance and grace for the day ahead. From that beginning comes resurrection, again rising, upstanding, rising again and again and again. And that's what we do. We resurrection hope people. By God's grace, resurrection hope makes order out of chaos. And each new day, the words are said again. It is good. So for that and so much more, thanks be to God. Amen.